Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate it. Sure, thank you. Here we have the Oklahoma Sooners joined by Patty Castle. This is the game's 11 and 12 press conference featuring the Oklahoma Sooners joined by head coach Patty Gasso and student athletes Jocelyn Allo, T.R.A. Jennings, and Hope Troutwine. Start with questions for our student athletes, Ryan Aber. Ryan Aber for the Oklahoman. Uh, Jocelyn, the camera saw you uh, holding up the five there in the first inning after T.R.A.'s home run. Uh, what gave you the confidence uh, to do that at that point early in the game? And just what was the, the, the feeling like after uh, that first one uh, to that point? Okay, now I was wondering what Holly was talking about. I was just um, cheering for her. I wasn't like holding up anything. Uh, it looked like you said five, this game's gonna be at five innings as well. No, no. Okay. You better, you better. No, <laughs> That's why I was like, I don't know what Holly's talking about five. Okay, <laughs> I don't know what it was, but it really looked like that. Very good. Yeah. But, Joe? But, but, uh, well, oh, go well, ahead, sorry. Ryan, I'm sorry. I was just, but, uh, a after y'all dropped that first game, just what was uh, the, the feeling like and the confidence level like uh, coming into that situation in the second? Yeah. Um, we were just in the locker room, just kind of resetting. And I went into that game with all the confidence, knowing we would walk out of it with a dub. Um, no one beats us. No one beats the Sooners twice. And um, I think we really just stuck to our game plan and kind of – um, zoned in on what it was that we needed to do. Joe. Joe Irwin, Benner Eyes in Oklahoma. Hope, uh, just going into the second game, obviously it's a winner take all and being on the stage for the first time. What was going through your head going into this one? Um, stick to my routine. That's something I've been working on for a long time, pretty much the whole postseason now. Um, but also just treating it like another game. There's no reason to psych myself out or any of the girls out by treating it like it's a special game that we have to win. We don't, we don't have to do anything. We just have to play our game, and that's what we are doing. Eric? Uh, this question is for Jocelyn and Tiare. What was Coach Gasso like between games? Uh, you've played a lot of games, Jocelyn, a lot of games with her, and Tiare this year's second year. What was her demeanor like? What was her message to the team? Start with Jocelyn, please. Yeah, definitely just reassuring us. She's not going to, like, yell at us before a game. I don't see the point in that. But um, she's just reassuring us and just letting us know, like, we're good. Like, it's just about how we come out the next game. And it was all positive affirmations. Tiari? Yeah, exactly what she said. Um, just calm and collective, keeping us positive, um, and just taking a breath, taking a moment just to reset and go out there and um, just know what, do what we know how to do. James? James Hale, CBS Sports Radio in Oklahoma City. This is for Jocelyn, Jocelyn Chiari. In the first game, you guys hit the ball. I mean, you squared up some things, but like kind of everything, everything was kind of left on the warning track. It certainly changed in the second game. So what did you learn from the first game that got you to the second game that you had so much better results? Start with Chiari, please. Yeah, the first game we were on it. Um, I mean, we saw both pitchers. We um, were seeing the ball really well, I think. In the second, we just really made our adjustments to low line drives, um, you know, attack early in the count, get the pitch that you want, um, and just controlling the strike zone a lot more. Jocelyn? Yeah, just exactly what Tiari said, just controlling the strike zone and um, just kind of not trying to be a big hero in those moments, like especially when your backs are against the wall, um, and just going out there and just continuing to play our game. Jenny? Hey, Hope, um, I'm going to ask Patty about this in a second, but the, the plan to start Nicole and then have Jordy come in in the first game, I assume there was a plan sort of relayed to you guys about if there's a second game you'll pitch. Can you kind of talk me through what you guys talked about as a staff before the game, and then um, you gave your impressions of your performance. What about Jordy today? Um, as a staff, we have each other's back, and we know that going into each and every game. And when Nicole gets to start, we know we're behind her 100%. Um, but it's also huge for Jordy to come in and perform as she did. Um, this wasn't a setback for Jordy. It's just, it was just her being able to come back at the World Series as a freshman and perform the way she did. And that's, I'm, uh, she's 
been impressing me all season, and she only has to go up from here. Um, Joey? I love Jordy. Joey Helmer, 24-7 Sports. Um, for Tiara and Jocelyn, uh, just take us through your confidence level because from the very beginning, you just jump on them from the start. It looked like you were just saying, there's no way we're going to lose this game. No, no way we're going to lose twice in a row. Start with Jocelyn, please. Yeah, I think um, it all starts at the top with Jada and just her really good at bats and then just kind of bleeding into me and Tiari and that bleeds into the rest of the team. So I think it's just us being confident collectively just as a unit and I'll, I'll put anyone up there and I know that they're going to get the job done. So just a matter of um, us trusting ourselves. Tiari? Yeah, and also just passing the bat. I think in the first game we were focusing on that as well. In the second game we really actually did it. So I think um, just passing the bat, keeping the order along, and get on as, many, as much as you can, um, and then we'll try and score you in. But just passing the bat was our, our mentality. Ryan Chapman, All Sooners. Uh, Tiara, you mentioned the entire team's mentality going into the second game, game plan. But for you specifically, that first at bat, what did you see? What were you looking for uh, to deliver that big home run? Yeah, I just knew from the first game that I just took it as a reset. Um, you know, the game of softball doesn't know if you're 0 for 3 or 3 for 3. So I just took my mentality, flushed it, knew that when Jada and Jossie got on that I had to do whatever I could, um, whether it would be a home run or a sack fly or anything. I just knew that it was my time to step in and help them score um, and then just, again, keep passing the bat along to Grace Lyons and keep that momentum going. Yeah. Duke, do you know with the LA Times for Thierry? You, you're from California. Obviously, you know a lot of the players who are – playing against, what was it like to kind of share that moment after the game where you guys all huddled together? Yeah, it's cool. Um, you know, me and Maya Brady have played with each other for a whole long time, especially with Jocelyn, so we're all super close. Um, but we all know that no matter the outcome, we're never going to change. Um, you know, we're going to be sisters on and off the field. So to, to um, play them, obviously, you know, we have a little rival going and, you know, some fun and all that. But after the game, it's just like nothing. But it was a really cool moment um, for us to share the field. So it was really cool. You're back. Uh, hi, uh, Ian Sachs, Arizona PBS. Uh, this question's for all three student athletes. Um, just tell me about what Grace Lyons means to this team. We, we saw today her kind of do it on, on both sides of the ball with that home run in the first game, and then especially in that second game in the seventh inning where she took that grounder up the middle and was this close to turning a double play. Start with hope, please. Grace Lyons, she has one of the purest hearts on I've ever seen, and – um, she is who she is all of the time, and that's she's rare and she's amazing to know and a blessing to this team and to all who can see her play. And she's important as a teammate and as a softball player, but she also knows that where her talents come from and how she can use God to shine through her is very amazing. Tiari? Yeah, Grace Lyons is a good softball player, but she's just a way better person. Um, I think just for her, that connection with the middle infield, the plays that she makes, I'm like just stunned every time because she's just so amazing. But just who she is as a teammate is even better for me. She always has my back when I need her, always checks in with me. Um, but she, I can definitely say that she's one of my sisters in Christ always and that she definitely paved that path for me. Jocelyn, since she's been your teammate the longest, we'll let you wrap <laughs> that one up. Yeah. Um, awesome from the moment she stepped on campus um and I've never seen someone play so free before and she just goes out there and does what she does and not a care in the world just because she knows it's already written and her love for Jesus is the cutest thing I've ever seen um and you just won't come across another Grace Lyons um as a person but as a player as well Clay yeah, Clay Horning, extra inning softball. Hope, would it be accurate that you are getting more comfortable and more confident and even stronger as this tournament has gone along? And, and if that's true, tell us about it. Um, it's, I'm definitely getting more used to the environment. The environment is – it's hard to play here whenever you have – there's a lot of distractions going on. Um, and I've really locked into my routine as I've thrown more innings. Um, so being comfortable and knowing my team has my back, um, it's getting easier as the innings go on. Anything else for student athletes? All right. Jocelyn, Tiara, Hope, thank you very thank much you. for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Congratulations. Questions for Coach Gasso, please. All kinds of hands go up for that, Coach. There's one hand I hope isn't here. He's not. Okay. <laughs> Eric. 
Patty, congratulations today. Oh, sorry. sorry. Congratulations. I wanted to ask you just about Jordy and bringing her in and the pitch. Were you watching pitch count? And how did you feel about her control? She really started getting on a roll during the middle part of that game. I didn't know what to expect, but I knew that it was time to give it a try because otherwise she's going to be sitting on the bench and I'm going to keep wondering if and how and when. So we thought it might be a good opportunity and it started to look real, like, whoa, she threw harder, adrenaline was going. I thought she had good control, thought she did a really good job. We pressed her a bit and um, I thought, she was starting to wear out just a bit, but um, when it was all said and done, she's feeling pretty good and not in a lot of pain and definitely will be able to use her going forward. James. You know, Patty, uh, CBS, James Hale, CBS Sports Radio in Oklahoma City. Everybody's going to talk to you about the offense and things, but Grace's play at the end, you've talked about her a lot. I, I was glad that the nation got a chance to see that at the end. But that double play combination and the things, the magic now that she can do there, that's pretty special for you, especially in entering the final three games. Yeah, games. I, I love defense. I love, I love home runs. I love Jossie. I love all that. But I love defense. And I do believe that defense wins championships in about every sport. So um, I feel like we've got one of the best infields in the country. But I, without question, in my mind, Grace Lines is the best shortstop I've ever seen. And I get to the pleasure of working with her on a daily basis. But she makes, she's so good, she makes everyone around her that good. So Tiare has had to elevate and has gotten a lot better, as Jana has as well. So she brings this whole infield together, and she's quite an athlete. Ryan. Ryan Aver from the Oklahoma. And, uh, Patty, sort of along the lines of what I asked uh, Jocelyn, uh, what was the feeling like after that, that first one going into the second one, and how big was it to get that game started uh, the way y'all did uh, with that three-run homer? Yeah, this um, – I think this team wanted to show Nicole May, we got you. Um, I also think they know – they are very prideful, and they truly do believe that no one can beat them back-to-back. Or twice, period. I mean, that's the way they think. And so they came out very calm, um, very cool, very – when we knew who was pitching, they were kind of excited, like, well, okay, we know, we're, we've seen it, we're ready. And they just felt very confident. I think Hope felt very confident. She's been throwing really, really well. So I, I – it was just kind of, I'm going to get your back. Nobody beats us twice. Sometimes having a new umpire has something to do with the way the game changes. Um, it was just a lot, like, like a start over. Let's just start over, let that go. But it's also knowing this is it. I mean, our season could be over. And we didn't even say that, but I think that drove them because they don't want to end. They would not do well ending with a loss here today. Jesse. Jesse Grin and Norman Transcript. Just to, to kind of add on to that, obviously after that tough first game, you guys got the quick start you did. How, is there an emphasis to kind of really jump out to a quick start like that, or is there just a trust in knowing that your, your team's going to be ready and, and be able to bounce back? And yeah. Just the, the difference between those two games like I that. I think it's just the trust in our we, – we always talk about trusting our training. We work hard. We've worked hard all year long, uh, and we pride ourselves in that. Another reason – she, she didn't, like, Jada Coleman walked three times, and I think she came around to score every time. Jada Coleman is the party starter, and she would be very happy with that um, title. So she, she gets everybody excited. She's fired up. She brings in the crowd. Um, so without her really, like, driving a ball through a gap, a walk – for her, just gives the bat to Jossie. There's this different kind of adrenaline when she's on and in the leadoff spot, and we've kept her there for that reason. But everybody kind of falls in once they see Jada on base, and she gets everybody fired up. So that, that's a big part of this, too, is just her starting the party, so to speak. Jenny. Patty, I got two unrelated questions. First, do um, Tiari and Grace practice that little 
flip that wasn't for the put out at first? No, no. This was just kind of their creative canvas on the field <laughs> where they create these things. And I, I'm just looking down. I thought, okay. And then, and then I heard Sid next to me go, oh, my gosh. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, do I got to go back and watch it on replay? I didn't even see what they did. It's I pretty just, cool. Yeah. So I'll go back and watch it. <laughs> my second question, I know you didn't want to play two games today, but yeah. the fact that you got to see what Hope could do in an elimination game, plus what you mentioned about Jordy before, do you feel like you gained some knowledge that could be pretty important moving forward? 100%. And as strange as this might sound, the second game was – um, a blessing for us because of that, to see hope in that environment, to see Jordy and what she can do for us, and to see our team bow up and step up and say, we're not going home. And that was important, especially against a team like UCLA. They are so, they're very dangerous. They're so good, well coached. Those pitchers are very good and they're tough. They're tough to beat. Their hitters are tough to beat. So it seems like we always face each other in these situations, and any time we play UCLA, we've got to be at our best, and they always make us better. So I, it was kind of, you know, the fact that playing against them has to really bring out your best. Joe. Joe Irwin, Benner Eyes in Oklahoma. Patty, I know that uh, Jocelyn, you know, with uh, Ryan's question about her saying, like, five innings, the game's going to end in five innings. I'm curious, though. How vocal is she throughout over the course of the game? I know you mentioned that you kind of give her her space to lead the team. How often is that her in the dugout? She is constant. She is near me, so I hear her. She's constant. She could be sitting on the bench. She could be, you know, sipping on a smoothie or whatever she wants to do in there, and she is not. Her face is right up against the screen. She is fired up and constantly talking. So, um if she did put those five, what, what? Tell me what's going on, because she wouldn't do. No, she. She did. Okay, she's gonna be in trouble. <laughs> well, I know she was doing this to the crowd, but I didn't see that. So yeah, no. <laughs> she's lying. Is that what you're saying? Would you like to see the video? No, I. Uh, we'll talk. Yeah, we'll have a talk. All right, down in front of it. Hey, Pat, another one on Jocelyn. Uh, we've seen a lot of great performances from her over the years, but this could have been her last collegiate game. Did, did you see anything different just in, in her presence or in anything coming into that? No. just the she, she gets so fired up for her family, for our team. Um, she's the most confident young lady I've ever met in my life, to the point where you're like, oh, okay, don't say that, Jossie. But that's her. And she wears it. She, I mean... Maybe she did do that for that reason, because it's not to kind of down, you know, kind of stick it in anybody's face. It's more about her excitement. She's just really raw with excitement and love for the game, and her exuberance just is, is fun to watch. And I, I said this to Holly Rowe, um, I think Jocelyn Allo is a, a big reason why this sport has gone to another level. People come here to watch her like she's Babe Ruth. I mean, they pay to see Jocelyn Allo. And that, I don't know that, I, I hope we see another Jocelyn Allo. I hope she's a Sooner when we see her. But <laughs> that's how she, she has a love for the game, a confidence. Um, and some people might look at it and go, but, and it's awesome. If you're around it, it's just to see that and to be around it, it just bleeds all over our team. They all want a little piece of what Jossie has. So it's been such an honor. I, she, she wants to go out her way and, and just leave her mark. She keeps saying, I want to leave my mark. She's left her mark. She's done it. Right now, it's just icing on the cake for her. Joey. Joey Helmer, 24-7 Sports. Patty, you guys have lost three games now this year, and the three games following that, you've outscored your opponents 39 to nothing. All oh. of them have been run rules. <laughs> uh, I, just what is it about your team not to, just to come back and win games, but to be so dominant, so impose your will so much? It seems like your team almost takes losses personally. They do, I think. I think it's like a second chance. Like, we did that wrong, let's do this right. And they all buy in on it and – I know it's just they're very prideful and very hardworking 
And uh, they want to represent OU. They want to represent our sport. They want to, they just want to, you know, let people enjoy the way they play the game. Coach, last one, Sarah. Kind of a non-softball question. Oh, well, no. whoa, whoa. <laughs> I think you'll like it. Okay, good. <laughs> it is very evident, and it's so re refreshing seeing how faithful your program is. What does that mean to you, and what does that look like for you guys on a daily basis? Um, if you don't mind me asking that. Not at all. Now, that I will answer. Um, I think they all kind of lean towards they, – they've talked a lot about Grace Lyons, who is um, – brought a lot of her faith into the program and I've seen lives change. I've seen kids being baptized. I've seen um, their Bible study groups. I, it is incredible and it's not like we're trying to force anything on anyone. It's just how this team is and who they are and their faith to go over to the other team and say, well, you want to join us around the circle I just stand there and I want to, I mean, UCLA and Oklahoma, California, Oklahoma, joining together, tremendous. You see it with every team. Whether we win or lose, they're not afraid to ask. And when you see Longhorns and Sooners and Cowgirls and Sooners, you're just, and that's really saying this is bigger than just softball and this is the, the you know, just bringing them in, praying, thankful, and just um, understanding what this is about, which is much more than just softball. So I couldn't be more proud. I'm the luckiest coach in the world, really. Coach Gasso, thank you very much thank for you your guys. time. Congratulations.